Hello everyone. everyone! Welcome back to another Epic Night Online. Hope you are doing well. Yeah, my name is Isaac. My name is Justin. Wow, Justin, you look quite good today, huh? Yeah, Isaac, you look very well today. <laughs> nah, not as good. <laughs> Just but kidding. Yeah, I'm Justin and he's Isaac. Yeah. So before we're gonna start worship, we're gonna play a very simple game. It's called Four Pictures and One Word. So all you have to do is there'll be four pictures on your screen and you have to guess what word it is. So how do you actually play it? Like get low? Oh, like that, huh? Yeah, we get very simple, honey. Okay, okay. Yeah, so you guys ready? 3, 2, 1, action! Alright, hope you all did well during the game. Stay tuned to the end to find out the answers. Hope you guys are ready for worship. Let's all welcome Bevy and the team to lead us. Yeah. Hello, Excel You. Let's praise Jesus today. Even if you are watching from home, let's praise Him. Our God, our God, a firm foundation, our rock. The only solid ground as nations rise and fall Kingdoms are strong now shaken But we trust forever in your name in the name of Jesus We trust the name of Jesus
But the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy Turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. And I'm gonna see you victory. I'm gonna see you victory.
Thank you, Bevy and the team for the amazing worship experience. So for this week, we only have one announcement and that is... We're going to have Epic Night! Yes! Woo! It's going to be happening on the 26th of September, 5pm at Auditorium 2. And you know, we're not going to follow like the normal rules. We're going to have SOP still. So please, don't go touching people la, like a winner. <laughs> Alright, so even though if you're unable to join us uh, for our Epic Night on-site, we will still be live streaming yep. it on our YouTube channel on the same time. So even though if you're unable to come, it's okay, don't worry. You can still join us on our YouTube channel. So see you all there. See you. Alright, hope you guys are ready for the word. And I also hope you guys have your pens and paper ready with you. But if you don't, go get it now. Yes, so today we have a very special guest speaker with us. And he is all the way from KL. Whoa. And he is none other than Pastor Andy from X Church. What? Yes. So, take it away, Pastor Andy. Hello, EPCC Youth. I'm Pastor Andy Yo from X Church, and uh, what an honor for me to be invited to be with all of you here at Epic Night uh, and to share God's word with all of you. This is a great privilege. I miss seeing all of you in person. I love Penang. I love EPCC. Uh, I hope that one day soon. We'll be able to see each other physically once again um, but tonight i have the great privilege of uh, delivering god's message to all of you and i've got a word on my heart that i want to share with all of you i know that your theme this year is that everything is possible in christ and that is so true and I'd like to speak along that theme uh, but also uh, i want to try and be relevant to the season that we're in right now it's a crazy season it's a challenging season and uh, it's an uncertain season. We don't really know, you know what's ahead of us. Uh, but in Christ, everything is possible and we have hope. Amen. Allow me to pray uh, with us uh, as before we begin to look into God's word. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just want to ask for your anointing. Uh, Holy Spirit, we ask that you be present with us. We ask for God, Lord, that you will bring illumination and revelation uh, from your word into our hearts. So God, Lord, challenge us inspire us, transform us today, O oh God, Lord, so that we can be more like Jesus. I pray, O oh God, Lord, that your anointing will be upon this message and you'll touch everyone's heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, great. Let's get into the Word of God. Now, if I have a title for today's message, uh, it's simply this, okay? Try and follow me. It is from nowhere to now here to where next. So, from nowhere to now here to where next um, and uh, the passage that I'd like to bring your attention to today is Mark chapter 5 verse 25 to 34 that will be the passage that we're reading and from this story we're going to talk about you know um, where God wants us to go if everything is possible in Christ uh, what's ahead of us what is our future and how do we get there what's next after all that we've been through this year, what's next? Amen? So, Matthew chapter 5, verse 25 to 34, is a story of the woman with the issue of blood. Alright? So, uh, I'm going to read this to you now uh, from verse 25 of, chapter, of Mark chapter 5. Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, 
immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched me? Or rather, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. Now, um, why this message? From nowhere to now here to where next. You know, this has been a crazy year. It's been a year that I don't think any of us expected. Uh, I'm sure many of us made plans already. Uh, I myself, you know, have made many plans for this year. But, <laughs> you know, the MCO happened, COVID-19 happened, and a lot of those plans were thrown out of the window. Um, you know, there was supposed to be a, a revolution conference this year. You know, we're bringing it back. Uh, but that has to be postponed to next year. And so it's a very disruptive time. And you know what? It came out of nowhere. <laughs> From nowhere to now here to where next. It came out of nowhere. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't ask for this. We didn't pray for this. We didn't hope for this. But it happened. COVID-19, a global pandemic happened. Uh, and um, most nations had no choice but to lock down. In Malaysia, we call it Movement Control Order, MCO. We all were restricted, isolated, quarantined, um, out of nowhere. But it happened. And, you know, it, and it was only like, what, two, th three months, four months? And I'm sure you already cannot tahan. <laughs> but here in this passage, we read about this woman who had an issue of blood. Uh, and, and in those days, when you have an issue like this, when you have a condition like this, you are considered by society to be unclean. Now, during MCO, we were all locked down. We were all in the same boat. For her, she was quarantined. Everyone else was free. She was locked down. She was MCO'd and she was quarantined because of her condition. She was pushed aside, rejected, locked up in the house, locked up away from community because no one wanted to have anything to do with her because she was unclean. Imagine that. Three or four months of MCO and we cannot tahan. Imagine her having this problem and being quarantined for 12 years. There are a few things that we know about her, okay? I'd like to kind of share and list them down for you. Number one, we know that she was bleeding from the inside. So it's not bleeding that you see that comes from the outside, but it's from inside of her. She was bleeding from the inside. Now, I, 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 I believe you're honest with me and honest with yourself. Um, many of us are also bleeding from the inside, uh, especially church people. We don't see it from the outside, uh, but something's going on inside of us. Something's going on mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Others cannot see, but you know it. And there's something going on inside. Maybe there's confusion. Maybe there's doubt. Maybe there's fear. Maybe there's uncertainty and unrest. But we're bleeding from the inside. Something is wrong on the inside. Something is being challenged on the inside. Some of us put on a smile when we come to church. Some of us put on a smile when we see our pastor, our leaders, our friends from church. We put on a smile because we don't want anyone to know they were bleeding from the inside. This woman was bleeding from the inside and she had this illness. Second thing we know about her is she had this illness for 12 years now. 12 years she, had this, she has had this problem. Some of us may have been suffering on the inside. Our mental health, our emotional health, our spiritual health, suffering on the inside for a long time. Maybe not 12 years, but perhaps 12 weeks is already long for you. 12 months, a year, who knows? But it's a prolonged issue. It's an issue that has not yet been solved. An issue that has not yet been overcome. And it's been some time, just like this woman, this illness for 12 years. Third thing we know about her is she has suffered many things from many physicians. The Bible says she has suffered many things from many physicians. Now, physicians are doctors, um, healthcare professionals that were supposed to help her. They were supposed to treat her and make her better. But instead, the Bible says she suffered many things from the very people that were supposed to help her. Imagine that. Imagine your counselor, your pastor, your leader, your friend, your family, people that are supposed to help you and make things better, perhaps <laughs> up until now has made things worse. 
Not that they intend to do so. Maybe they didn't know better either. Maybe they themselves didn't know the answer. And maybe out of their good intentions, they tried to help, but instead have made things worse. Maybe you went to them to share your problems and maybe out of a good intention of the heart, they gave you a lot of assurances and advice that they thought was helpful, but actually made you feel felt worse. Just like her, this woman, she has suffered many things from those who were supposed to help her. Number four, she spent all that she had. She has spent everything. She has exhausted all the resources. Maybe you're there. Maybe you're feeling that way. Maybe you're in that place right now where you feel like you've got nothing left, uh, nothing left to give. No, nothing else to share. Nothing else to invest. You are just so dried up, so drained, so tired, especially after the past four or five months. You just feel so tired out. You spent all that you had and you're no better, just like her. In fact, the Bible says she continues to get worse. Things are not getting better, but getting worse. She was rejected, avoided, outcast, isolated, quarantined. And maybe physically, you may not be that way. Most of us are free now. We can go out. Of course, certain restrictions, but we're free to go out. But like I said, it's an internal problem. And maybe inside of you, you're feeling rejected, avoided, outcast, isolated, quarantined. Many are suffering on the inside. Maybe you are too, today, if you care and dare to admit it. The thing about our mental and emotional health or even our spiritual health is that it doesn't always show on the outside at first. You could be smiling, yet still suffering. In fact, <laughs> church people are great at this. We know how to put on a smile. Some of us are right now complaining about having to put on a mask to come to church. But the truth is that many of us have been wearing a mask to church all this while, if you know what I mean. We could be smiling, yet still suffering. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 15, verse 25, if you have a time to read it, please go and read it yourself. But uh, verse 25 to 27, actually, Leviticus 15, 25 to 27. The Bible says, if a woman has a flow of blood for many days, that it is, that is unrelated to a menstrual period, or if the blood continues beyond the normal period, she is ceremonially unclean. As during a menstrual period, the woman will be unclean as long as a discharge continues. Any bed she lies on and any object she sits on during the time will be unclean. Just as during her normal menstrual period, if any of you touch these things, you will be ceremonially unclean. You must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water and you will remain unclean until evening. Ceremonially unclean. The woman with the issue of blood was declared unclean. And not just that, everything she touches becomes unclean. And not just that, anyone who touches the things that she touches also becomes unclean. That is the effect that she had. Now, why am I sharing this? Because if you were to spiritualize this and maybe uh, kind of like uh, uh, symbolically see how it can apply to us, is that if we have an issue on the inside, be it depression or sadness or anger or bitterness or whatever it may be, whatever illness, whatever bleeding there is on the inside, know this, we affect other people. She was unclean, the thing she touches become unclean and anyone who touches the thing that she touches also is unclean. So, I hope you know that whatever you are going through, you are going to affect other people. You probably have heard uh, uh, this phrase that says, hurt people, hurt people. Uh, we affect others. Whether it's for good or for bad, the truth is we do affect others. You could walk into a room and make the whole room feel pressured, tense, pr uh, uh, stressed. Or you could walk into a room and bring joy and happiness and excitement and enthusiasm. Either way, our lives, our action, our words, our demeanor, our mood does affect others. When you're unclean, everything you touch becomes unclean. That's the principle in the scripture in Leviticus. So, I want to share with you, from nowhere to now here, do you notice that they are, they are the exact same letters? Nowhere, now here. The difference is just where you shift the W. And the difference is a difference of perspective and how you look at things. So, today you can look at your life as a nowhere, or you can look at your life as a, well, 
whatever it may be. Maybe it came out of nowhere, but I'm now here and I have a decision and a choice to make to go where next. Amen? So, in order to go where next, in order to stop the bleeding, I want to talk to you about how can we stop the bleeding on the inside? How can we stop what's going on, on the inside and start living? How do we stop bleeding and start living? How do we go from nowhere to now here and make the right choices, make the right decisions to go to where God has for us next? Amen? Uh, I have about maybe six or seven things I'd like to share with you really quickly now. The first point for you to, uh, for you to help yourself to get the right perspective from God. See, you either look at your life as nowhere or now here where you have an opportunity to make the right choice to go where God has for you next. The first thing that we need to know is this. Uh, and it's, the answer is found in the first thing that Jesus said to the woman. Do you remember what Jesus said to the woman? The first thing, the first word that came out of Jesus' mouth to the lady. What was it? <laughs> That's right. The word is daughter. Out of every other word, out of all the words that Jesus could have said to her, the first thing that came out of Jesus' mouth was daughter. You know why? Because the first point is this. If you want to go to where God has for you next, you want to move forward in your life and not be stuck here right where you are. If you want to have a breakthrough, you want to live a life where everything is possible in Christ. Number one, you need to know who you are. Number one, know who you are. See, this woman has been called all kinds of things. Now, the Bible doesn't even give us her name. You know, she was just a woman with the issue of blood. She is known by her condition. Can you imagine coming to church and no one knows your name? No one knows where you're from. They just call you by your condition. Oh, that boy, that is the smelly boy. Oh, that ugly boy. Oh, that, 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 uh, 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 the chubby girl or whatever. You know, people call you by your label, your condition. And that's what happened to her. Now, even if the Bible said something about her, about where she's from, and the Bible does this very often, right? Uh, Jesus of Nazareth, for example. If she said, oh, the woman with the issue of blood, issue of blood from Bethlehem, then at least we know some things about her. You know, if, she's, if the Bible says, oh, the woman with the issue of blood from Penang, we can at least make some assumptions about her. Maybe she speaks Hokkien. Maybe she likes Chakwe uh, Tiao. Uh, maybe she's an island girl. Some things we can make an assumption about her, but the Bible, I believe it's intentional to show us that she was someone who is robbed of her identity. She is known now by the labels that people have put on her. And maybe you have been labeled too. Hopeless, useless, just a burden to society. I don't know what kind of hurtful, painful words people have said about you that make you feel like no one wants you to be around. No one wants you around. No one wants you any near, anywhere near them. It's, it's as if you're unclean. And that's why the first thing, the very first thing, and perhaps it's the most important one, number one is to know who you are. And that's why Jesus, the very first thing he did, was to restore the woman's identity. Before he even healed her of anything, before he even does anything in her life, he says to her, daughter, do you know, young people, you are a child of God. You are a son and daughter of God. Now you may say, but pastor, I'm diseased, I'm sick, I'm injured, I'm depressed, I'm mentally unhealthy, I'm broken, I'm hurt, I'm suffering. Uh, Pastor, I'm down. I'm in pain. Yes, you may be all those things right now, but you are still a child of God. You know why? Because your condition does not change your position. Yeah, you may be unhealthy right now, but you're still a child of God because your condition does not change your position. Yeah, you may be broken on the inside, but you're still a child of God. The devil wants you to think that you are broken. No. Broken may be your condition, but your position that does not change is that you are a son and daughter of God. If the devil can make you forget that, then nothing is possible in Christ. But if you can remember who you are, that you are a child of God, you are the king's kid, the Lord is your master, he's your father, then you will know that everything is possible in Christ because Christ is your God. Christ is your master. Christ is your savior. The Lord, God is your father and you're a child of God. Number one, know who you are. 
Jesus said to her, very first thing, daughter, daughter, that's who you are. You're not the issue of blood. You're not the rejected. You're not the broken. You're a child of God. Number two, if you're a daughter of God and you're a child of God, that means you have a father. Number two is you need to know whose you are. Number one is know who you are. Number two is know whose you are. Who do you belong to? If you're a son or daughter, like I said earlier, then you, someone's your father. So who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your daddy? Well, my daddy. It's not just Mr. Yo. My daddy is God the Father. And so you have the same Heavenly Father. Some of us don't have the luxury or the blessing of having a natural earthly father even. But you're not an orphan because God is your Father. Amen? Not only do you need to know who you are, you need to know whose you are. When you know whose you are and who you belong to and when you know your Father is the living, mighty God, wow, you... You live life with a certain confidence. You know that, you know what? No matter what happens, Daddy's got my back. He can heal me. He can fix me. He can bring a miracle into my life. He can put me back together. He can make me new again. Because God is my Father. My Father is not just anyone. My Father is the living God, the great Creator, the mighty Savior. Amen? Know who you are. Know whose you are. And number three, choose who you're with. Choose who you're with. God created us to live in community. So the third, question, third thing is, who's your body? Who's your community? Look at this lady. She was rejected, quarantined, isolated, pushed aside. Why? Because of her condition. But did you stop to think about this crowd that she was with? When Jesus asked, who touched my clothes? The disciples says, everyone was thronging you. That means there was a crowd pressing together. Well, that crowd will not exist right now because, you know, they are not one meter apart. But those days, at that, that time, they were also close with each other. How come this woman was allowed to be among them? How come they did not reject her? Well, I tell you what, there is such a community and I pray that my church and your church is that community. That community that will not reject people because of their condition, will not push people away because of what they're going through. You need to choose who you're with because you become like your friends. Show me your friends and I will show you a future. You become like your friends. You become like the people you hang around with. And she chose the right community. The community that will not push her away, reject her. But you, just like her, you need to be with a community that accepts you for who you are. Amen? Not judge you for your condition, but accept you for who you are. But don't stop there. Be with a community who accept you for who you are, but also challenge you to be all you can be amen it's not enough just to be accepted for who we are that's great but hey there's a where next and god wants us to be all that we can be in him so be part of a community a church a group of people that will say hey we accept you for who you are but come on be all you can be amen when you're part of a community of christ like that your challenge is to do the same for others when you are accepted, don't lie and reject other people. You too accept others and challenge them to be who you are. And it's a cycle that keeps on going. Follow the right crowd. Amen? Choose who you are. We follow the right crowd. And the right crowd is the one that follows Jesus. Follow the crowd that follows Jesus. Number four, understand only God ultimately heals while the world makes it worse. She went from physician to physician to physician, pastor to pastor, leader to leader, counselor to counselor. Now, I'm not saying pastors, leaders, friends, Christian friends, all is not good. They are good, but they are not God. They are good, but they are not God. And then what? Human beings, humans, we are bound to disappoint you, bound to not meet your expectation, but only God. And at the end of the day, what you're really looking for can only be found in God. So you need to understand this. Not just know who you are, not just know whose you are, and not just choose who you're with. Understand that ultimately, only God heals ultimately. Amen? The sooner you realize that, the better. You will not have so high expectation on other people and you put all your expectation, expectation, all your hopes, all your dreams, all your desires on God. Amen? Hallelujah. Number five, this is important. Learn to touch God, not just wait for God to touch you. How many of us here, we came to church and our mentality is, oh, I can't wait for God to touch me. Oh no, I, 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 just, I just pray today the worship leader chooses a song that touches my heart. And I pray today the message is going to touch my heart and change my mind and change my life. Now, 
nothing wrong with that really there's nothing wrong with that but there is a there is a level of maturity where you go from just waiting for god to touch you to then touch god this woman was healed when she touched god not the other way around it was jesus who said who touched my clothes who touched my clothes who touched me god is saying who touched me are you someone who touched god are you singing worshiping praising serving living in a way that touches god are you thinking in a way that touches god learn the art of touching god and i tell you you will experience breakthroughs and miracles in your life touch god how beautiful and how powerful will it be when we come to church and say you know what i'm just going to church to wait for god to touch me i'm coming to church to touch god i'm going to give an offering that touches god's heart i want to sing in a way that touches god's heart i'm going to bless and serve others in a way that touches god's heart did you notice jesus asked who touched my clothes disciples basically say everyone is touching you what do you mean who touched your clothes but then you see <laughs> it's like jesus it's like the disciples are saying jesus what are you talking about everyone in epcc is singing to you everyone in epcc is praising you everyone in epcc youth they are giving into the offering bag everyone in epcc is reading the bible what do you mean who's reading the bible what do you mean who's worshiping you see jesus said yeah i know they're all singing i know everyone in epcc youth is singing but there's this one girl this is one guy there but he really sang he really gave he really served can we learn the art of touching god you know when how we touch god very simple you touch god when you trust god god is touched by your trust because trust says to god god you're the only one i have you're the only one i need nothing else matters nothing else satisfies only you god i trust you for my exam results i trust you for my healing i trust you for my relationships i trust you for my future i trust you for everything god you touch god when you trust god that woman with the issue of blood she had nothing else she spent all that she had jesus was all that she had and jesus was all that she need and by her trust she touched him when you put your faith into action you grab god's attention jesus turned around and looked for her god got, got his attention trust requires and demands action trust means you must act on it trust is faith in action james 4 verse 8 says draw near to god and he will draw near to you you see that and i, I pray god allows me to kind of like interchange his word touch god and god will touch you amen draw near to god and he will draw near to you number six number one was know who you are number two know whose you are number three choose who you're with number four understand that ultimately only god ultimately heals number five touch god not just wait for him to touch you number six is go where god is going she was with the crowd that was going with jesus Jesus was actually going to somewhere else. She didn't come to heal this woman with the issue of blood. He was actually going to Jairus' house to heal his daughter. And there was a crowd following Jesus. There was a crowd of Jesus' followers. And she was one of the Jesus' followers. And she followed the crowd who was following Jesus. And basically, go where God is going. Go where God is going. Where was God going? God was going to go heal somebody else. God was going to go and heal somebody else. You know why some of us don't get healed and some of us don't get a breakthrough? Because we are so fixated and so focused on ourselves. Ourselves. When God wants us to look out for others. I know you're worried. I know you're like, what? But if I have needs and if I look out for the needs of others, then how will I be, be, be how will my needs be met? Well, God will look out for your need. The Bible says, for all things work out for the good. God will work all things out for your good. But you work things out for others good. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says don't just think of yourself, think of others more highly than yourself. Jesus was going to heal somebody else, and this woman with the issue of blood was following Jesus to go touch someone else's life. When you take your eyes off of yourself and focus on others, you begin to see the way God sees and will experience what God wants you to experience. I know it's difficult when you are going through your own stuff. But if you look out for others, God will bring healing into your life. Job 42 verse 10. This is powerful. I've never seen this before until recently. Remember Job? 
everything was taken away from him. <laughs> everything was robbed from him. But God restored everything back. But do you know when God restored everything back? Job 42 verse 10 is the answer. And the Lord restored Job's losses. When? When he prayed for his friends. When he began to minister to others, God restored back everything he has lost. There's a principle here. God wants us to be selfless, unselfish, and begin to love others. How does that work? Basically, you know what? If you have a problem, and I have a problem too, but I don't take care of just, I don't, I don't just be selfish and look at myself and try to fix myself, but I see your need and I try to meet your need. How beautiful would it be if there's someone else behind me who's also looking out for me and someone's behind him who's looking out for him and we look out for each other and that's how everyone's needs are met. Amen. As God meet our needs. Go where God is going. God is always going for not the 99 but the one lost sheep. Amen. Number seven is simply this. Go testify. God does everything in your life so that at the end of the day you have a story and a testimony to share. Go testify. Luke chapter 8 verse 47 same story but it's Luke's uh, account he said when the woman realized that she could not stay hidden she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him the whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed amen God touched us so that we can touch others so testify be bold to share what God has done in your life be bold to share what God has given to your life Amen. Be bold to share. The whole point of why God does what He does is so that you have a story to share so that somebody else can be inspired and blessed. Remember earlier we said when, when you're unclean, everything you touch becomes unclean. That's the principle in Leviticus. Well, the opposite I believe is also true. When you're clean in Christ, when you have your breakthrough, when you have your miracle, when God gives you your story, when you're clean, everything you touch becomes clean. When God blesses your life, you go and bless someone else. They too will be set free. Amen. From nowhere to now here, how do you go to where next? Know who you are. Know whose you are. Choose who you're with. Understand that only God ultimately heals. Uh, learn to touch God. Go where God is going and go testify. Amen. I hope you will be blessed by this word. Let me just pray for you and then we'll close. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will set people free today. Oh God, I pray that they will not see their life as a nowhere, but they will see their life as a now here. And I have an opportunity now to make choices, to make decisions that will take me to where God wants me to go next. And I pray, oh God, Lord, that if there be anyone listening and watching this today there's suffering on the inside i pray that you will bring healing and restoration and breakthroughs and miracles of god lord even as they learn how to touch you and touch your heart by trusting you i bless you O oh god as i bless your people in jesus name we pray amen god bless you pcc youth hope to see you again soon amen Alright, thank you Pastor Andy for the amazing message just yep. now. And remember the games we played just now? Yeah. You guys wanna know the answer, do you? Oh yeah, I wanna know the answer. Yep, let's find out. Alright, so we've come to the end of the epic night. Yeah, so sad. 
But it's okay, the hype isn't over yet. We will continue this in Zoom right after this, and the Zoom ID will be right in front of your screen right now. Yeah, and we'll be playing Scribble IO 2. So, yeah! See you guys there. Bye! 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 What? Okay, bye. Hello everyone! Hope Welcome guys... back to another epic stop, night. Stop, stop, stop. Wait, I said hope you guys. <laughs> Hello, Hello everyone. everyone! Welcome back to another epic night online. Yeah. Hope you all are doing well. Yeah, my name is Isaac. And my name is Justin. Huh? What? Wait. Oh, oh shucks! <laughs> I was like, wait. I actually thought you were Justin. Yeah, I'm like, huh? Wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <she's tired. laughs> so I confused. Alright, hope you all did well during the games. Ah! <laughs> Alright, thank you very for the. Alright, thank you. <laughs> I thought we can one shot all. Oh, no, no, no bloopers. Okay, okay, okay. Stop, Justin! Okay, carry, okay, carry, okay, this. And Epic Night is going to be happening on Auditorium 2, 26 September, September, September at 5pm. Alright, hope you guys are all ready for the word, but before that, go grab your pens and papers. But if you don't, go get it now. Wait, why is that? That makes no sense. Yeah, go get it now lah. If you don't have it, then go get it now lah. I said if you don't. Alright, hope you guys are all ready for the word, but before that, let's grab our... Eh! Today, we will have someone very special sharing the message with us and all in- ah! <laughs> <laughs> Okay! So I hope you guys had a great epic night and I'll see you guys when I see you uh, in epic night. Yeah. See you guys! Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye. Retake! 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, and we'll be playing Scribble- Ah! I Correct. said so, and we'll be playing. Correct! Oh my god, Justin! Hey, Ding, I'm going to eat the food. I'm going to eat the food. Hey, you see, you can't become bloopers, Dio. Now, see myself in the video now. Let's see you laugh, oh. I laugh at myself, oh. Okay, okay, last one, last one, last one, you can do it. I don't know bloopers, man. Okay, next time we do no bloopers. Okay, next time we do for real. If for real, then you laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>